A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. we have heard and understood, the things our fathers have told us, we will tell to the next generation. The glories of the Lord and his might, and the marvelous deeds he has done. commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven. He rained down manna to eat and gave them bread from heaven. bread of angels, he sent them abundance of food. So he brought them to his holy land, to the mountain his right hand had won. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. We pray to the Lord. The Lord be with you.
Lectio Sancti Vangelii Secundum Ate, Secundum Ioannem. Gloria Tibi Domine. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God has set his seal. They said to him, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. They said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Verbum Domini. Very often in the scriptures, we hear uh, about a lot of geography. Oh, you'll read about hills and mountains, you know, uh, trees and rivers and seas and waters. And then there are the deserts and valleys. Now, the more plush and abundant and ripe, you know, uh, landscapes, of course, you know, we see that as symbolizing a time of prosperity. But then, you know, we hear about deserts, which are, which are rough and dry, you know, which, 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 which are hot. And it's in these desert times where God does great work within us. You know, it is, it is there where there is much transformation done. And Jesus, as we know, he's entered these deserts. And Jesus knows, shows us how to walk through these deserts and to be righteous in that and to be virtuous as we go through these desert experiences. But as we learn here in the scriptures that there are many times peoples have gone through deserts and in, in the heat of it all, you know, in, in the hardships of it, there they abandon God. 
There is where the real person comes out. No, and that's what we saw early on in the first reading in the book of Exodus. No, that the people were giving up on God. No, and they says, well, Moses, you brought us out here to this desert. You know, it, is, it is hot. You know, we have nothing to eat. You know, they complained. Now, where is, where is this God? No, they started to doubt. There was lack of faith here. See, and then in, in them doing that, we see that we see what their true faith is and how they truly believe. Here is their character revealed. You know, and it shows us how much they love God and are obeying God in these moments. And so Jesus, um, and so Jesus uh, uh, brings us back to that here. You know, the, the people are, are saying that, you know, our, our fathers, you know, they had, uh, or the, their ancestors had, had bread come down from heaven, you know, through Moses. And this is, what do you give us? And Jesus is saying, I give you my very self. He says that here, when you eat of this, that I am the true bread. Later, he will say, if you eat this bread and drink my blood, you have eternal life in you. Oh, Jesus is saying here that God sees how, how, how difficult the deserts of life can be. But yet Jesus experiences these deserts of life. And Jesus, he goes further because he loves us so much that he says that you will not lose your life because if you follow me, who am the true bread, and if you believe in me, you know, him who is the true drink, you will always have this life in you. And even though you may go through the valleys and the deserts of life, you have me. I've done it already. And this is where, where a lot of us get stuck here, is in the deserts of life. So in this, in this passage, I mean, there's so much, so much substance here. Jesus, first of all, is... Is, 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 this is very sacramental. Here are the, the seven sacraments. And, you know, as we go through these valleys and deserts of, of life, you know, we need to remember that God is truly with us. Jesus says here, he says, of course, you know, that the Father has sent him, and him who is the visible presence of the Father, this is God himself, God's love in action, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, to where believe in him will be saved. So here he is. No, and then Jesus mentions here about a seal about him. And when we hear the word seal in this New Testament, it refers to belonging to somebody that you were sealed in their presence. Uh, you know, another way of saying that is like, sort of like being branded with something. You know, that there is, is a mark on somebody. You know, saying that you belong to someone. And Jesus says that here's the seal, that he belongs to the Father. He's in union with the Father, the Son of God. And yet Jesus is, is now saying that we will have this eternal life and that we will also have this seal in us. And when do we get this seal? Is at baptism. There we go into the waters with the, with the Lord. There, there is this, this emptiness there, original sin. And then we come up and now... We belong to God. And that emptiness is now filled with the presence of the Lord. 
because it is there that the Lord has poured his love through the Holy Spirit into our hearts. And there, there is where the soul is marked. We are anointed, you know, in our baptism, anointed, and with this anointing, with the chrism oil, our soul is changed forever because it belongs to God. And it is a mark that is indelible. And then when we make our confirmation, we are sealed once again with the seal of the Holy Spirit. The first, the first, the, the, the first sealing is to have a, a share in the life and the mysteries of Jesus Christ. To share even in his threefold ministry of priest, prophet, and king. And then, uh, later on, we are sealed. And of course, we, we confirm our faith, what we believe, and then there is also a ceiling there where we can live the public life of Jesus. We can, we can pray like Jesus. We can do the works of Jesus Christ because we've been given his grace. We belong to him. So, so here, look, look, think about these holy ceilings that we belong to God. And this is eternal life. And the eternal life is nourished is strengthened, the life of God, the grace is strengthened when we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. See, this is the true food here. This is himself. And this is what helps us go through these deserts and valleys of life. And they're going to come. Yeah, we may be walking with the Lord for many years. You know, and all of a sudden, everything starts to go wrong. You know, then we don't have the energy to, to pray as, as we used to. You no, know, and then prayer is a really, real challenge. We're getting distracted. We just don't feel like doing works of charity and being good. No. And, and then, you know, there's the other sufferings, maybe physical, or else maybe here are some persecutions coming. And what happens to us at these times? Do we look to Jesus, thinking about what he's given to us so that we could endure this desert and so that we can be victorious through these deserts and valleys in life. Remember we hear, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for his rod and his staff is with me. Now that, 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 was, that was before, that was the old, the Old Testament, the old covenant. No, yeah, God was, was with them, the spirit of God was with them. But we have something even greater because now the spirit of God is within us. And we are temples of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but we don't walk it alone. Yeah, God is around us, but now he's inside of us. See? And so we, we, we can walk through that trusting him. Trusting that he will provide for what we need. And that whatever dryness, whatever suffering is just temporary. But what helps us to rise up in this, to be, to be faithful in all of this, is to look to Jesus, who's already walked through these deserts and these valleys. And there, yeah, though, like, here we come, you know, yes, this is a desert, every, everything's so dry for me spiritually. And I go to Mass, maybe even go to Mass every day and do adoration. But it's just so dry. You know, it's like being in a wilderness. I don't feel God. But yet, you know, and even when we come to communion, I don't feel anything. You know, but, but there, Jesus is doing something. There, see, you keep coming back. There is where the true transformation occurs. 
right there. And so here is Jesus who shows us righteousness, who shows us how to be virtuous in these times. So we look to God. You know, we look to him and we look to his example that Jesus just loves through this all. So here, yeah, we, we ha- and then we have this life within us. And it can be like a river that flows out of us. You know, the, the graces, the graces come in and they flow. And we think about like Mother, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa who was in, in a sort of a state of desert, of, of, of darkness spiritually. And yet she always says, you know, she was always with Jesus. She did her holy hour every day. No, she did her, all of her prayers. No, she went out and, 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 and touched the poor and helped them, you know, and uh, gave them dignity. She brought them into, into their convents and, you know, uh, fed them and clothed them and let the, let the, gave, them, gave them humane treatment. You know, it's because she saw Jesus in them. Even experienced these darkness, she was able to remain faithful to the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, when we go through our times of of, of, uh, darkness or or dryness, that's when we see what we really are. But even in that, you know, even though, like, you'll start to see maybe even, even memories from from your past start to come up, you know, you start, start to, uh, you know, get, get more angry or you're just impatient and, you know, you, you, you just the temptation to doubt so much. Well, a lot of times Jesus is bringing it out. God is bringing it out. Just remember when you go to the desert, you sweat. And it was hot. You know, you sweat it out. Uh, and sometimes when, when you're sick, you know, when you're sick, it, you, you feel horrible inside. You know, but then, you know, the, the, you, you sweat and, you know, the things come out, you know. But it's coming out. And so sometimes in this desert experiences, we're getting dried out. We see, we see yeah, what we are. And here's, here's, here's a chance to grow in self-knowledge. And says, okay, yeah, you know what? I'm grouchy, I'm angry, I'm impatient. Yes, I still tend to, to doubt sometimes. While we sing that is there, now we could work on it. Now we can say, okay, God, take it out. No, sanctify me. And we have the sacraments, the sacrament of penance. We have the Holy Eucharist, which then is the sacrament of penance. Of course, there's pardon of sins, but there's also healing. See, and this is, this is what, what we need to be in anticipation of, of the healing. And then in, in receiving the Holy Eucharist, of receiving Jesus, coming to Jesus, knowing that I'm sharing in his life. That, yeah, I may have some darkness spiritually, some dryness, but Jesus, this is the dryness of Jesus, and he's conquered. And I believe in him, I shall conquer too. And so may the Lord now strengthen us. May the Holy Spirit remind us always of what we have and who we are in God, who he's made us to be, sharing in his life, having eternal life within us, what he gives us as his own self, the bread of life, to nourish us so that we could be his presence in the world. And then so that here in this life we could enjoy him, we can be with him, we can radiate his presence, but then we can, we can be with him for all eternity, knowing his love and truly having rest and peace. God bless you all.